Hey, I'm Caleb with You Can Make This Too. This is my shop. Um, it got to where I almost couldn't do anything, so I thought I'd take a few days, clean up, and install my new dust collection system. Three weeks later, it's time to get back to projects, so I wanna show you what I did and what's left to do. I keep everything on wheels to make moving things around when I need to easier for rearrangers because I tend to do that kind of frequently. But also in my small shop sometimes, part of my layout includes being able to move tools to make room. So wheels are a great help, but figuring out where things are gonna go, there's just too much to try things and see what it works out and experiment that way. So I like to experiment on graph paper actually, and here's the layout I came out with. I'm not gonna get deep on this, it's just a technique I wanna share. A lot of people like to use SketchUp, but um, this, for things like this, I like having just pieces that I can move around. I use one square to represent four inches. I have my shop laid out with fixed things like my miter saw, dust collection, garage um, doors marked out, other doors marked out, cubbies I have are marked out. And then on my tools, I also mark the direction of feed because that kind of helps me know which way material is coming in and out to make sure my infeed and outfeed are accounted for. One thing I didn't account for in my graph are big offcuts and sheet goods. So by the door is kind of where I had those. I got this cleaned up, had a bunch of junk tools here. Those are gone, so my ladders might not stay there. Then my welding station, um, for about a year and a half, I've had an idea for a welding cart. Um, I'll get to that eventually, but for now, my Rockler Material Mate stores all my welding metal equipment. Got my tanks there, and behind that I have my compressor and some miscellaneous boxes I need to find better storage for because right now my planer's just kind of hanging out here, which is fine. I've got enough room on my cords and dust collection that I can move this around and make room so it doesn't interfere with my table saw. That's directly between me and you. But once I have a better place for this, then I'll be able to push the planer over here so it's out of the way, giving me more floor space, and then pull it out when I use it. But I can also push it pretty far out of the way without having to worry about the cords. I'll show you. As is, I can get it all the way down in this corner without having to worry about disconnecting anything, which is handy, because all this is ceiling mounted. Um, I'm waiting on a connector, so I'll be able to unhook the dust collection hose easy, but the electricals run over the ceiling, which is really handy to minimize how many cords I had on the floor. I used to have a bunch, so I'll show you the electrical as I go through those tools. But anyway, behind the planer, is my big tool chest with a bunch of mechanics tools and other stuff. Right now it's the overflow from all the dust collection and things I haven't found a home for. And then the bad boy, my new dust collector. This is the upgraded version of the Clearview CV1800. It comes standard with a 15 inch impeller and blower housing. I upgraded to the 16 inch blower and impeller housing, which raises the air volume, goes from 1400 CFM to 1700 CFM, I believe. But anyways, yep, um, I only have eight foot two inch ceilings though, so I wasn't able to fit a 55 gallon drum under it. So you can see there's a seam here. I ended up cutting a four inch ring out of this to get my 55 gallon drum to fit. Um, so I did the math, I think I have about 48 gallons or so of storage, which is way better than the 15 gallon tiny drum I had in my old system. Also, this is a five horsepower unit. My old one was one and a half, so the amount of dust collection to get at my tools is just unbelievable. I'll sample that for you guys later, but I have a video that's gonna be coming out on the installation of this, so make sure you subscribe, notify if you're interested in seeing that. And I bought all this with my own money. This isn't sponsored. I'm just a huge fan of what this system's doing for my shop. Moving on, uh, my lathe, which is also sort of my battery station because I don't turn a lot, so need to fix that. And then past my lathe, I've got my small uh, rolling tool chest, which actually has all kinds of hand tools and stud finders, all that kind of stuff that I don't have a good place for goes there. I want to get some better wall mounted storage. I've been working on a tool wall for like six months that I slacked off on where my hand tools will go, but I have some ideas for um, some clamp storage and things to go on the walls. And now that I'm starting to rearrange, I have room for those. Also, I switched from my soft boxes. This is just video note. I had some soft boxes I'd move around some. Now I have my small LEDs. These are so much handier. And for a lot of stuff like this, I'll have links in the description. And speaking of lighting, I actually upgraded my lighting. I used to have 10 um, Sunco lights. They actually sent me those lights uh, just over a year ago, that first 10 pack. 
There are the 5,500 Kelvin um, four foot shop lights. And I added a few more to my machine area because it wasn't dark and the duct was kind of in the way. After I did that, it was so much brighter. It's like, oh man, so now I actually have 20 lights. I bought the last 10 and have lights all over the place, which I appreciate one just for having more light, but also I'm been experimenting more with the photos I do and creating dynamic light, turning off lights in some area and kind of controlling the light more. So having a lot more lights makes it easier to control where there is and isn't light and how much light, especially with these dudes too. And continuing on from there is my assembly table uh, with the table I'm working on on the bench. Down there, I need to find a better home for it. That's my EnviroCleanse unit. Um, I recently did a video on air pollutants in the shop and what we have to deal with. That scrubs particulates, which I do have an air cleaner on the ceiling, but it also scrubs VOCs. So I really like having that for whenever I'm doing any spraying, working with epoxy, et cetera, anything that has VOCs, volatile organic compounds, the fumes that are bad for you. And then we move into the miter saw station that's been there forever. Oh, of course there was a video on that. I've got a video on plans on this and I don't have plans on this miter station, but I'm about to do another miter station over at a friend's shop and we are doing plans on those. So if you're interested, make sure you, you know, click the buttons, do the things. So YouTube actually tells you when that project comes out, we're going to start working on that next week. So hopefully in a month or so, I'll have the video out for you. Now moving into my nasty corner before we get to the machine cluster. Um, this is my portable AC. I've had that here for a while. It's going to live here because I punched a hole in my brick facade to exhaust it. This is my hand tool bench. Um, a few things I don't have a home for yet ended up here. Um, my buddy made me this awesome sign and I'm doing my epoxy colors on it. I need to do the red steel. And that will go on the tool wall, which now that I've shuffled things, it's kind of off-centered. So I think I'm going to move that. I don't know. I need to get to that. This is the corner of embarrassment. So one of the impetuses for finally moving everything was actually my old freezer died and I had to like tear everything out of the way in order to get that out and the new freezer in. So then once it was all messed up, I was like, well, you know, at this point I may as well do the uh, whole rearrange and I'd been wanting the clear view. So pulled the trigger on that and started. But anyways, to the machine cluster. And cluster definitely feels like a uh, appropriate name for this. Uh, I hope on camera it doesn't look too busy. Anyway, I got my bandsaw here, which the drill press is in the way of, but most of this time I'm using my bandsaw. It's smaller things and curves. I'm not really doing a lot of long gripping on it, but if I am, I can pretty easily walk this out of the way if I need to. Then of course, drill press, um, my dust collection columns coming down, and you can see my power is tied to that. And then I've got my rigid oscillating sander. I uh, love this thing, need to make a new stand for it. It's one of those shop list items that I'll get to sometime, I don't know. Then on the back side of my cluster is my jointer. This was actually another thing that made the rearrange possible. The jointer used to be turned around. I've got a cubby back here because the motor stuck off the back end of it. So I'd stick that cubby or that motor in this cubby. And that was a big constraining factor in how I could lay up my shop was having to have the jointer in that orientation. But last year my head exploded, so I bought a helical. And when I did that, I needed a more powerful motor. So I upgraded the motor, moved it down below. I did a video on all that. So I was able to move this. So between having to um, replace this freezer, the fact that my jointer was rebuilt and could be moved and wanting new dust collection, that's why everything kind of got overhauled. Oh, another factor in that was I upgraded my planer last year to that Woodmaster about a year ago now and my old dust collector just couldn't keep up with it at all. And it, they recommend at least a two horsepower unit for that thing. And my old one was only a horse and a half. The new one being five has plenty of power for it, but that was another reason I decided to go ahead and upgrade the dust collector. And I've just been tired of cleaning up messes. But speaking of, let's go over the dust collection setup a little bit. So a rule of thumb on cyclones is for the cyclone to work efficiently, you really want at least a five foot straight run out of it with no fittings or anything. I'm a little short of that. It's not going to screw anything up. It is going to affect performance a little bit, but not significantly. Um, my jointer or my planer here, it's uh, 18 inch. So since it 
can produce a lot of curls, I wanted it as close to the main pipe as possible to maximize how much suction I was getting. Of course, some of that's killed by having a hose, uh, flex hose longer than I needed. I have a blaske right here so I can cut this off. I have blaskades at all of my Ys. Uh, I fall into the camp believing that if you so basically there's two ideas on your dust collection. Either you can have your blast gates at the tool or at a Y. Uh, idea being that if it's at the tool and you cut it off, even though you're pulling dead air, it kind of doesn't really do much. I fall in the camp that I want to minimize how much pipe any air is running through because that's just increased resistance, which is gonna decrease performance. So at all my Ys, I have a blast gate so I can totally cut off any area, any Thing past that Y if I'm not using a tool at that Y. And planer being a big mess maker, I wanted it close. So I can cut that off and then I go to the rest of my tube. There's one other upgrade I didn't mention yet on this. So as I said, this is an 18 inch machine. So it throws pretty big curls or shavings if you're using the full width. And this is a four inch port. And with the underpowered collector I had before, the issue was this would clog up and it would just throw too much chips and it couldn't keep up with those long curls that the knives were making. So I bought the upgraded to the helical head. So I don't wanna take all this part to show you, but trust me, there's a helical head inside there now. So instead of making an 18 inch wide chip, I've got, you know, little 25 millimeter, I think is what they are. Actually smaller than that, 12 millimeter. 12 millimeter carbide cutter heads making really small chips that is much easier for the dust collector to pick up and evacuate. Okay, that's the that's the first Y I just talked about. Then it elbows over and gets all the way up to my ceiling. Then I have the next Y, which I have the leg that goes to my machine cluster and then my other blast gate that goes to my miter saw. There's nothing else on this long run except for my miter saw, so this is the only blast gate on it. If I tie anything else in, I'll add another one, but to get air to my miter saw, I just open that port. This one opens it up to my machine cluster. At the machine cluster, I have a Y up high that breaks down and goes to the bandsaw into a splitter box, taking that six inch pipe, turning it into two four inch hoses to go to the two ports on my bandsaw. And you don't want, the closer together you have fittings, the more turbulence is created, which increases resistance and just kind of pulls down how much air you're moving. So try to space these out some. So we've got some space here. Um, these two on the bottom, unfortunately, just had to be close together. But the next one is the one that goes to my jointer. Oh, and of course, as you can see at the Y is where I have the blast gate for my bandsaw. And then going down, I have my next Y with the blast gate for the jointer. At the Y, of course, is also kind of the point. And I have another blast gate here, which controls the air going down to this box. And this is the hose that I hook up to my table saw. And it's also long enough I can bring it to my um, router table. And actually this is a 21 foot hose. So the broom attachment or the vacuum attachment for like sweeping the floor, um, I can hook to this and I can go all the way in my shop, clean my whole floor with a vacuum instead of sweeping and making dust. I also have a reducer on this to go to a two and a half inch pipe that fits my sander and drill press. Um, these boxes are made by Clearview and they're super handy and also it's hard to see, but on the bottom, I have another blast gate at the very bottom and I've stood this off a little bit. So if uh, that basically serves as a clean out, if I have some kind of clog anywhere in here, I can open that run a snake up or just if chips have settled there, which they probably will occasionally, I can uh, open up the blast gate on the very bottom and let any debris clear out of the pipe. Best I've been able to figure and what the guy I bought this from told me and my research corroborates, uh, this jointer was made in the 1890s and dust collection just wasn't even a thought then. So I had to retrofit dust collection onto this. I'll show you how I did that. So the way this jointer kind of worked is all the chips would just fly down through the carriage and then there's a big v-shaped thing here and it would push them out this side or out the other side i took advantage of that and put this dust port kind of thing that was elongated in there and siliconed it so it's wide it almost totally filled it i had to bandsaw the edges some and then did a really sloppy silicone job all the way around and that closed the opening because otherwise you'd be able to see the cutter head right past that um, so that sealed the opening there. And same thing on the other side. 
but right above that in this table, the way that this whole table assembly slides off, there was a giant gap there and I knew I needed to seal that off some. So I took some Harbor Freight brushes and just cut the handles off and then cut one in half to close there. So first thing I did was glue these on with construction adhesive, but there was a gap here and chips were coming out of here, looping around and the suction coming through those brushes was pulling the chips here. That's why these are here. After I put these on, I have like 98, 99% collection. I put one on both sides and have another brush there inside you can see. Yeah, sorry for the blown out shot, but all the way back there, you can kind of see that hole in the gap. That's the outfeed side dust port. And there's the infeed side dust port. So yep, chips have a pretty clear shot right in there and most of the area around it is blocked. And yes, I know that I need to put a guard around my belts. I know, I know. You don't have to work in this shop, only I do. I'll fix it, I promise. Don't worry about me. So some of you are probably curious, um, the entire dust collection set up from the hoses, the fittings, all the pipe, the unit, et cetera, ran me about $3,500. I know that's out of a lot of people's budgets. Uh, this is like my fourth setup. So I've worked up to this over, over time. If you wanna upgrade, but something like this and the whole ducting is not in your budget, check out my video, my friend's video, Chris Burden, A Glimpse Inside. He recently did a budget setup that's still very efficient and very useful. Um, it's just a different approach to it, but that might be more in your budget if something like this isn't. Something like this is, I highly advocate it been doing this almost a decade and it's really nice finally being able to do this but you can definitely woodwork without it as I have until like last week. The only thing left I didn't talk about is my table saw and router table. I've got a video and plans out on the router table. Um, I did mention this briefly because right over there is the dust port that's on the floor with the hose that I can hook up to my table saw close. The only reason I leave it off, this is the one thing I do have to hook up, is because that's a, a walkway. I need to get one of those cord ramps to put over the cord that's there. But yeah, I can reach all my tools and vacuum the whole shop um, from that port. Anyway, uh, that's what I got. I have a few things left to do. I gotta finish my tool wall. The cabinets you saw behind the joiner, I wanna get rid of those. I'm gonna add some more wall hanging storage. My clamps are just shoved in a corner there. I have no clamp storage, so that's gonna be something I need to figure out. Um, my air compressor, I used to have hooked up to a hose reel that I took down because it was in the way, and I haven't been hooked to that in a while, so I need to find a good place to put my hose reel. I also wanna get a cord reel because I don't have any convenient cords um, to move around anymore, so I need to fix that that and those are the quick priority lower priority is building a new um, sander stand getting the welding cart together I'm also thinking about swapping out my lathe and having a more compact lathe stand because I don't ever do long turnings but I want something with more swing so I can do bowls and yeah that's uh, kind of where things are Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this or learned something, got some ideas maybe. Um, a lot of the furniture in here I have plans for. Anyway, until next time, make time to make something.